welcome everybody to Humo Would You Rather, the welcome, program welcome. where we, Rachel and I, attempt to gross each other out. She, has, she hasn't been able to really get me yet. She hasn't really come up with anything that uh, could really uh, knock me over. But uh, I don't know if anything could. I really don't know yeah. if it's possible. I've seen some really fucked up shit. I so. have to dig in the depths of my soul, and I haven't in my decrepit and i haven't had the chance to do that yet and I'll, I'll, i've written, i am gonna get you though i wrote a novel where i there and there's a passage in this book where a man is forced to eat his own hand and i describe it in medical terms down uh -huh. to the bone so yep. i i can yeah so I'm it's gonna be hard graphic detail yeah and yeah. i worked in laboratories a lot of gross shit so oh yeah such as like diseased body. literally gross shit yeah. <laughs> like actual shit oh i see you okay. yeah like feces and sputum which that was the one thing i couldn't handle i could handle worms and pieces of scrotum and all that i couldn't do loogies it, i have a gag reflex oh. of other people spit Ugh. and and to think there must be like part of medical school where you're staring at a petri dish filled with some kind of bodily substance and you have to like oh yeah yeah. Well, in oh. microbiology, you actually, so when you grow the organism, part of it is you actually have to smell it yeah. to describe it. So um, I'm going to start this out by burning some sage because I know that you're about to um, ruin my life. So I'm going to, I'm going to sage myself right now. Just to ward uh, off the, the demons. <laughs> yep. All right. So, all right. Sage. <sighs> Thank you. Morgan's going to wreck me. <laughs> all right. Here we go. Perf. All right. Well, speaking of, then I guess I'll take the first dive. Um, would you rather be burned alive or suffer the death by a thousand cuts? Wow. I think bur I, I, my biggest fear is being burned alive, but I think that might be quicker. Quicker, yeah. But I don't know. If it, but I think they're going to be equally as painful. How well, deep think, are the cuts? That's my one question. How deep are the cuts? Well, I, you know, if there's a thousand cuts, I imagine some of them are superficial since they're going to be cutting maybe to the bone or something. Um, and then some of them are going Yeah. No, like, I'm doing burning alive. You do the burning? Well, yep. with the burning, at least, it'll get to the point where it's like your nervous system can only take so much pain. It's going to shut down. Yeah, it just shuts down. You'll pass out and then you'll just die. Yep. Uh, whereas the death of a, a thousand cuts, you're going to bleed a lot and it's going to sting and uh, you're probably going to um, start to sweat and the sweat will pour into the wounds. Oh, and God, we think about that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's just so long. It's so long and art. you don't know what's coming next. No, no, I'll, I'll just burn. That's the only time I think in my life I would choose burning. Yeah, you go for the burning. OK, yeah, I, I, I think I wow. go for the cuts myself. Why? Um, well, I mean, like I said, some of it's just going to your bones, and uh, so you're probably going to bleed out pretty quickly, and you're probably. But what if you don't? What if they save the very last 200 cuts? So you have to deal with the 800 that are non, and then you non superficial, or superficial yeah. rather, and then you have to deal with it. like that's a lot of torture. Dude. Well, it, it is malicious. Yeah, I think the Romans invented that one. That was of a torture. They did. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds about right. Well, Romans invented the idea of men cutting their hair short because that they thought, well, you know, if he, if you're fighting a guy and he has long hair, you can pull his hair. That'll hurt. So that's why they started cutting their hair short. You know doing. that you okay, which brings up a point. People who are fighting in any way, shape, or form in a movie. Or doing anything physical, like girls who have their hair down, they're like exercising. No, that's not realistic. You do not exercise with your hair down. I can barely live with my hair down, first of all, because it's too hot. And if you're fighting or anything like that, it's in the way. So y'all okay. are just trying to show out, look cute. It's You look stupid. Put your freaking hair up. And they're not usually wearing bikinis on top of all that. No, yeah, don't, no. <laughs> at the beach and even at the beach is too hot no absolutely not yeah yeah that's true yeah 
Uh, and if you're sweating and you got your hair sticking to your skin, your that's back. Ugh, it's yep. hot. It's hot. All right. So what's your first story or your first uh, would you rather? I am dedicating my first would you rather to Florida. Um, and I thought about it and I, and um, I actually have a little prop when I ask you this question. So the question is, would you rather be attacked and eaten by an alligator or swallowed whole and eaten by a python? Mm. And I bought this at a run fair many, many years ago. And it's an actual alligator head that this guy like That's real. turns. Yeah. And he turns it into like a dragon. He puts these things on it. But yeah, it's a totally real oh, shit. alligator head that goes on my wall because I'm that kind of a girl. Well, the way that alligators kill you is that they do the death roll where you're in the water and they spin around and around till you drown. So whereas, you know, snake bites you and it takes a while for the venom to kill you. And well, no, no, no. Pythons don't bite. They swallow you whole. Oh, well. So you would I'm... literally be swallowed whole like a mouse and then you could be alive in the python. But I'm wondering, how is it that I'm a that the python's able to do that to me? Am I unconscious or something? Or No, they literally, I mean, you can Google there's, it's happened. They're, they, they so open like maybe, their jaw and then they just swallow you. So like maybe they get because they constrict you. Yeah. And then put you inside their stomach. Oh, so maybe like one sneaks in the house and does that or something. Or you're in the Everglades. Yeah, that that's a dangerous place, right? Is that mostly swamp and forest? It's all swamp. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes. Um. Yeah, I guess. Well, the python, I think, kind of draw, draws it out a long time. Um, whereas the alligator, I think that's quicker. I think that's a quicker death. So you drown, and so I guess I go for the gator. So. That is a very Canadian answer of you. Oh, yeah? Since I because, don't... Because here's what all my Floridians are going to say. I hope. We're definitely choosing the python. Because as soon as we get in that stomach, we're pulling out our freaking pocket knife that we have carrying around at all times and slicing our shit out of there. Because you yeah. you're not dead. You're swallowed whole. Oh, oh, so that option exists then? No, that's what oh, they do. Like, yeah. I have a, you might I have be a... constricted. I mean, they might constrict you till you can't breathe and then eat you. But there is a possibility that you may be still alive when you're ingested. Well, I'm going to go with that. All right. Yeah, I guess I go with the python then. And I do I do have a Swiss Army knife, so that might help, you know. Um, I don't know if it would help with the alligator at all. Uh, probably not. Probably not, because they're when they when they get in that when you're in the water, you don't have any control. You don't have any control. That death rolls, you're done. Well, I got. But it could if, be quick. If I make it to Florida, you gotta take me to some pond. Oh, I'm taking you. Oh, 100. You're going. Wanna, you're going air boating. Yeah. You're going in the Everglades. You're gonna go deep in the the woods. You're gonna go. Oh, I'm gonna ruin your life. In I want to go way. one of those uh those those like ponds or rivers at night where you, you shine a light and you see the, the gator eyes looking back at you. We did that just on Saturday night, actually. Saturday night. Yeah. My friend lives in a preserve and we heard the gators and the, we were telling the boys to be real quiet so they could listen. They make this really guttural sound and we flashed light over there and you could see the eyes. It was fun. Oh, wow. Have you seen a panther in the wild? Yes, there? I have. Mm -hmm. That's yep. so, so cool. Yep. All right. So, All right, uh, so we're going with Python. Yep. All right. My next one is, uh, would you rather be buried alive at a depth of 50 feet, kind of like the bride and kill Bill, but much deeper? Uh, you're not in a coffin either. You're just in the dirt or okay. walking along the beams of a building in construction. And it's like 50 stories up and the beams are slick with oil. Buried. You go, you go with the buried. Yeah. I have a, well, those are okay. Those are both two of my biggest fears. I'm very claustrophobic. And I'm afraid of heights. Yeah. Oof. Um, 
but my initial reaction is I couldn't be on this I on the slippery thing I would panic and definitely die so being underground I might have a chance I don't, I don't even know if there's a technique for walking on slippery surfaces no it's just death you just go for like you don't ever shuffle your feet you just kind of I couldn't do it jaunty way yeah yeah, I'd, I'd go. Yeah, well, I mean, I'd probably pass out from being that high up. So <laughs> I would, I would die. <laughs> I guess you could probably dig yourself out of of being buried to fifty feet. Uh, I feel bad. I'd feel better about it. Yeah. Yeah, the dirt would still be soft, I guess. So yeah. Let's go with that. All right. Uh, what's your next? The thought one? of being that high freaks me out. Okay. Um, this is submission from one of our lovely listeners jamie lynn i adore her by the way she submitted three really good ones which i'm using them all because i like them yeah one i altered a tad bit but i'm sure she won't mind so thank you jamie heart energy tree um would you rather get a paper cut every time you turn a page of anything or bite your tongue every time you eat um I'd go with the paper cuts because um, I could just get a pair of gloves and read with those. Um, whereas you had to bite your, I hate, I, I'm an epileptic and every time you have a seizure, you bite your tongue. Um, it was My especially, too. yeah, it was especially bad during the first few times. Like I had to eat nothing but yogurt for a day or two. Yep. Um, so yeah, I'd have to go. Uh, well, on, on the other end, I guess that's a good way to lose weight, isn't it? If you, ah! if you having pain, you know. So, God, I hate it. it's the word mouth pain is like the worst though. Yeah. And you don't you feel kind of stupid too? Like I I thought I got the hang of this eating thing. I mean Yeah, my, and you're just uh, eating a chip. I'm like, oh cool, I just bit that blood is pouring out of my mouth. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? I just was eating chips. <laughs> for Christ's sakes. Yeah, you I'm gonna go stupid. with uh the biting love too though, or I'm sorry, paper cuts, because I already deal with them. <laughs> yep. Just put a band-aid on and move on, move on. Yeah. All right, my next one is, would you rather be struck by lightning or have molten lava poured on your foot? Oof. Uh, I think be st- struck by lightning. Yeah, me too. Because Before. you can survive. Yeah. It's quicker. It, it's, it might knock you out. Very possible here because we live in the lightning capital of the world. Is that right? That's, that is a legitimate – Google it. Oh, I'm I didn't know that. Mm. It's, it, it's insanity, the amount of lightning. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to go with that because the molten la- lava on my foot is going to burn – that's gonna be that's gonna be excruciating pain. What, well, I was, uh, I was watching a video. Um, it was shot in Hawaii, and of course they have volcanoes there going off pretty consistently. And there's this thing that happens. They have a name for it. I can't remember what the name is, but it's like a little pop of lava that flies in the air. And if you're uh, very unlucky, it'll land on your leg or something. Oh, great! It, it just burns right through the bone. Oh, uh, right? can you imagine like one, like a little plop of lava lands on your face? Like, oh, cool. Not yeah. like a bee thing, it's a freaking piece of lava. So then your flesh just falls off. Yeah, yeah. volcanoes are fascinating, but if it's erupting, you got to get your stupid ass. Yeah, no, I'm good. <laughs> I'm so good. Amazing thing about being struck by lightning, I saw a bunch of pictures of people who have experienced that. They had these scars on their backs and their chests, and they that. actually, the scars, look like, the scars look like lightning. That was the interesting thing about it. They had these, like, pink... Uh, shaped uh, scars that look like lightning i'm changing it chill chill yeah we look we look kind of creepy standing there behind some <laughs> stairs you know you... <laughs> hang on i don't know what happened i really don't Ooh, look don't at that. do that i just want to poke you and i can't can you get out of this mode please I'm not in it. I didn't pull it up. I just want to not do it. My computer hates me. Oh, there we go. Is it gone now? Well, it's just me in it now. Oh, 
great. There we go. We're good. Oh, good. So this uh, is why Rachel shouldn't handle techno uh, technology. Okay, so next up is. No, I've messed you up. I'm sorry. That's all right. Are you next up is you and no, what I is the paper cut? Wait, no, no, I. You, but well, I just. Blah, blah. Did yeah, did that one. Yeah. Okay, this is also JB Lens. I changed it up a tad. Ugh. Ugh. Would you rather wear used underwear from a stranger every day, every day, forever, or brush your teeth with a used toothbrush from a stranger every day? Right? Well, I, wouldn't, I guess I wouldn't mind wearing like a, a woman's underwear. No, nope, it's got to be man's. It has to be a man's underwear. Yep. Ugh. And so like it's a different used pair every day? Mm -hmm. or Mm -hmm. Well, I hope it's not a hobo or something like that. Well, I'm going uh, with both. So both, it's, it's different used toothbrush and or underpants or or underpants. Well, I'll go with the underpants because I can take them off when I get home, I guess. I mean, is the rule that I have to. Yeah, but you only have to brush well, your teeth twice a day. Yeah. Well, I mean, you I guess I mean, that. You, can, you can rinse the brush. You could put it in boiling water, I guess. But there's no rule about that, right? Okay, let's say we can't wash them because obviously, yeah, we can't wash them. Well, yeah, I guess that that's a better idea because ultimately, uh, I can cheat by swishing with Listerine or something. And yep. uh, also, I mean, I don't let not... anybody's like funk on my nether regions. Yeah, I mean, we also could get, we could get yeast infections. Yeah, that's true. And this person does not does doesn't mean necessarily that they have gingivitis or anything like that. Right. So they might they may be have a perfect clean uh, uh, bill of dental health. So mm -hmm. that's possible. So I guess yeah, I'll go with the toothbrush. Okay, I'm also going with the toothbrush. Okay. Okay. All right. So next one is: Would you rather walk in on your parents having sex or have your parents walk in? On you having sex. <laughs> well, does it count if I already did that, like when I was really young? Well, so. you, well, I guess if since you know. Uh, yeah, I not I would not want. I think, ugh, both are so cringeworthy right now. Well, I, I mean, I I assume. Jesus, that they I so cringeworthy. Well, I mean, if you were in the middle of the act and they walked in, I assume they would get right the fuck out, right? I'm sure they would. I think <laughs> or, I would rather them walk it on me than me walk it on them. Yeah. Because that, I just don't, that would be mentally probably harming for me. So it would be harming if they walked it on me, but less harming than me walking yeah. it on them. So if I had to choose, I would say I would have them walk it on me. Yeah, I guess. Uh, yeah, I guess. Then they I, would be traumatized. Yeah, I guess I'd rather be walked in on because they yeah. would also know. Yep, yep, time to stay the fuck out. Yep, exactly. <laughs> yeah, you learn. Ah, look at that smile. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm, I'm not allowed. Um, I'm not. I'm not loud during the act. I'll put it that way. I'm not screaming or knocking bed. I don't have a bedpost, so there's no bedpost to knock against the wall. So I make pretty Neither minimal. So the the likelihood of having people walk in is actually kind of high as far as I'm concerned. But, uh, you know. I lock a door. All right. So uh, what's your next one? This is my last one from Jamie Lynn. And I, li I literally cannot answer this question. So you're having to answer it first. Also, you're gross, Jamie. But I love you. Like with all of my depths of my heart. <laughs> Would you rather ugh, eat someone else's vomit or someone else's feces? Um, vomit. Because I mean, I find, well, I find whenever I puke, for some reason, it, it tastes like tomato skins half the time. Um, whereas feces, there's no other way to interpret that. That's just one terrible taste. Um, Fucking tomato skins. Yeah, that's what I find. Um, so yeah, 
neither option is uh, attractive, but um, yeah, I'd go with the puke. And the, also, if you eat the feces, you'll end up puking anyway. Fair point. <laughs> I think I'd rather kill myself. <laughs> oh, just kill yourself, yeah. I you just hand me a gun. Vomit, like, unless it's children's like milk vomit, which is not cute at all, but it's tolerable. But human grown adult vomit will immediately induce a vomiting reaction to me because it's a, like, like I said in the in the lab, I could handle the stool specimens. I could not handle the sputum. It's a gag. It's an immediate gag reflex. So I'm thinking if I had to take a taste of one of the two, I'm choosing feces. I don't know why. That's so disgusting. Yeah. Oh, my God. I don't want to say that on camera. Can I choose the kind of vomit it is? Can it just be, like, hungover, like, out, like. I don't know if it ever. Liquor vomit. Like, no food. If there's food particles, I'm going with shit. If it's liquor, just liquid, I'll go vomit. Well, okay. I mean, I don't, I don't know if it really matters because I like oh, popcorn. I like popcorn a lot, but I got a stomach flu once, and I was eating a lot of popcorn at the time. And the fact that popcorn was coming up didn't improve it at all. It was just puke is puke. That's what I've discovered. No, there's no. You're incorrect. There are a lot. There are lots of different kinds of puke. For sure. Oh, there um, is. But I'm saying, like, taste-wise, it just, I don't know, it has a way of tasting. Because, I mean, it's acidic. its your stomach acid. It's bile. It's bile. Yeah, yeah it's bile. It breaks down flavors. So. Yeah. Oh, God. Okay. My next one is, this is uh, it's just kind of Great. stupid. But uh, would you rather burp butterflies or fart glitter? <laughs> Burp butterflies. Yeah. I mean, if I if I had to choose, I would actually burp glitter, but I'll burp butterflies. Yeah, I'd go with that one because you know you could you could just kind of sneak it, like kind of do it off to the side, and then people amazing. Oh, the butterflies. Yeah. Those are they're, they're they're so distracted by the butterflies. You'd be like, yeah. Oh, you're so cool. Yeah. So yeah, I'd go with I the don't want, I mean, glitter coming out of my ass would be epic. And coming down your pant leg. And everyone knew, you know, I just, I'd rather have like, yeah, that'd be a cool dope effect. Like just hi. Yeah. Ooh. And then butterflies come out. Whereas coming with the glitter, in. you know how much you'd be vacuuming. Oh, no, <laughs> good point. We are not. Del- That's it. Mine made up 100%. If either ever was. You- Do you have a lot of carpeting in your home? I don't want to talk about it. Oh, okay. A rent, and yes. There's a fucking like shit. Like the wall carpet? Yeah, pretty much. And I have a really big hairy cat that leaves enough uh, shit for me to deal with, so I don't want uh, any glitter. Yeah, yeah, okay. So what's your new next one? Oh, this one's really tough, too. Oh, I okay. Would you rather eat a chunk of someone else's hair or... Drink a glass of someone else's sweat. I'm going to vomit thinking about this. Where's my vomit bag? Do I get to close my eyes while I'm drinking the sweat? Yes. And it's pretend it's seawater or something. Yeah. yeah, I would do that. Um, I'd rather do the sweat because I think our our I I'm think our bodies. Gonna gag. I think I'm gonna gag. I think our bodies are actually designed to reject hair. Like if you've ever accidentally got one in your did. mouth, yeah. like your gag reflex Ooh, reacts yeah. against it. So to, to swallow it would be really, really hard. I'm going to have to do sweat too. Yeah, you probably start puking with the... Oh, the I'm literally going to gag thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, although if I could choose whose sweat it was, that might change a little bit. Oh, okay. All right, go or ahead. What do you mean like... um. Like your you ever like Chris question. Hemsworth sweat, then I'm fucking totally downing that shit. Oh, I see. Okay. All right, the next oh, one. Jason Momoa. Sorry. Jason Momoa sweat. Yeah. All right, my next one is: um, Would you rather clog the toilet on a first date or first day at a new job? First day, at a new job. Yeah, I'd go for that one too. To um, set a precedent. Hopefully, I feel like I'm here. 
Hopefully they don't have a company plumber coming in and and make talking about it. I'm like, sorry, y'all need to work on your plumbing because it's just not acceptable, and I'm gonna have to find a new job. These pipes are too small. Yeah. Yeah, this is ridiculous. This is all your fault, not my fault. Yeah. yeah not on a first date. That'd be there would never be another date. I'd be too embarrassed. Yeah, you'd have to leave through the window, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So. What about you? Uh, I would. Uh, yeah, I'd have to go with a new job too. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, we all have those times in our life where maybe we're not getting enough fiber or produce, or. Um, I have bad stomach issues, so. That yeah. A lot. All right. So, what's your next one? Would you rather be killed by guillotine or beheading by sword? And this is a submission from my friend Vanessa. Thank you, Vanessa, so much. She's a weirdo just like me. I would go for the guillotine because it's so heavy. Sorry, it's a guillotine. I should have known. Yeah, I, I know yeah. it's guillotine. So it's yeah, I mean those things are are pretty reliable. It's very heavy, and it always does the job. Whereas if it's a guy with a sword, you don't uh, know how heavy he's gonna strike. Yeah. So what what if he doesn't hit hard enough to knock your head off right away? What he but to, it's kind of a off? badass way to go though. Like it's it kind is. of more yeah. badass. Like you you're beheaded by you know what I'm saying. So if your legacy like oh, he's beheaded by a sword. But I mean you know getting through the bone that's not easy right. No. So yeah, I'd have to go with guillotine as well. Yeah. So yeah, go with guillotine. It de- well, it depends on like the circumstances in which I was dying. So if I was like really trying to show off and be a badass and like I was pissed, I might go with a beheading just to like prove a point. Otherwise, I'll go with guillotine. <laughs> yeah, like turn around and say "fuck you" one last time. Yeah, exactly. Uh, be like <sighs> blood scr- God, I am on point tonight, aren't I? I had a fun day. Oh, what happened? What was fun today? Oh, no, it you wasn't that, fun. It was just saying that to me. I was being a sarcastic bitch. Oh, okay. Uh, so in the same context of 10,000 spoons when you need a knife, that kind of ironic. <laughs> Alanis Morissette's definition 10, of... 10,000 spoons and all you need is a knife. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, an English professor actually pro- pro- he proved that there are no ironies in that song he just said it's a series of bummers yep yeah. okay so my next oh, one so this one's not uh, shocking or disgusting um but it is a dilemma would you rather have an intelligent partner or good looking partner so gorgeous and fucking stump dumb nope. or really intelligent person intelligent. yeah oh okay. yep I've done that. The other thing, I will never long for long term, but dated, and I was immediately uh, uh, turned off, uninterested. If you can't yeah. hold a conversation with me, I'm psh, I'm out. Yeah, I guess uh, maybe they have these expectations, like, well, I look this way, so women's are just gonna want to sleep with me. They yep. don't want to talk to me, and then you're wrong. Yep. We're talking about uh, working out or whatever the hell else it yeah, is. Right. Like, okay, yeah, no, don't care. Don't. There's a frog outside my house right now making a lot of noise. Oh. Well, I mean, I've met women who are really good looking, but I have nothing to talk about. So I also find that to be a chore to try to talk to them. So I'd go with the intelligent partner soon. Uh, I mean, instead, um, she can always get a makeover. <laughs> there you go. What was that old movie that we liked? Um, the little teeny bopper movie with uh, Freddie Prince Jr. I don't know. But she's that. all that. She's all that. Oh, she's all that. Yeah, that was a cute movie. Was it? Uh, was it Jenny Jones who had the show where people are constantly getting makeovers? I think so. God, Jenny Jones. That was a long time ago. That wow. Show, that, went, that show went through all these crazy phases. Like you're aging us real bad. My roommate dresses too sexy. My sister. Yes. Yes. One. Um, <laughs> yeah. So and the makeovers. So, yeah. It's like <sighs> someone brings their dad on. Oh, he's such a great dad. But it's like they're also saying, but he dresses like a slob. Yeah, that's. Amazing. Yeah. And uh, such a douche move. But I have to say they worked some miracles. Like there were people on. I thought, no way. They can't do anything for this girl. And I don't know. Some of those gay guys, they really know what, what they're Dude. doing. Dude. 
it was it was incredible i was like holy yeah. hell yeah i know god jenny jones we're old as hell yeah oh yeah well uh right what's your uh next one all right ready yeah would you rather be crucified on a cross or bound on the ground and eaten by insects that was all me you know i think um well the kind of insects that would eat you would be like fire ants i guess mm-hmm. um so i guess or I, any other kind of i would actually go with that because with the crucifixion thing they could leave you there for a very long time and you that is correct away. Yep. Uh, and uh but how, what's more painful well fire ants that would definitely be pretty painful you know how painful that would be yeah to have like hundreds and thousands of fire ants biting you that would be like you might you'd probably go into shock actually yeah probably yeah because of their little venom yeah so yeah god but hanging so long yeah you'd be there and then you have birds might come still wildlife might come get at you but you're literally nailed to a cross oh god that's really hard i don't know well, you didn't specify what kind of insects, so it, maybe a black widow spider will come around and put you out of your misery too. Well, like n- normal insects. I mean, yeah. ants are gonna come first. Oh, do you do? You, are there black widow spiders in Florida? There are, but there's more brown recluse where oh, we are. Yeah. yeah. I think in Arizona, like they say, when you put your shoes on, you gotta shake them because a black widow spider could be inside. Though what I mean, I don't think brown recluse ones. I don't think uh, death is assured, but um, yeah, you're you're gonna have to take a trip to the hospital if one of those gets you. Well, my aunt got bit by a brown recluse, and it so it gets infected, and what it starts doing, it starts eating your flesh. Oh, so shit. yeah, so she had to go like her whole leg, literally was looked like an open wound because it just it's it, it starts spreading and eating eating your flesh oh man it's real crazy so you have to go in and get like a bunch of um antibiotics and they have to they save her leg skin grafts yeah Mm -hmm. they did skin grafts holy shit yeah that's pretty crazy all right so uh my next one or was it yeah this is my next one no it's you yeah oh yep uh would you rather smell like cheese which has been left in the sun so the florida sun of today or a ham- okay. or hamster cage which hasn't been cleaned for a fortnight. What kind of cheese? Uh, let's say blue cheese. Isn't that the one you don't like? Or... Yes. Yeah. Um, a hamster cage. Okay, you'd rather smell like like piss, I guess, basically. Or... Well, there's a little there's a tone of cedar in there, so I'm gonna okay. go with the hamster cage. Oh, okay. Well, then again, I mean, cheese. Nope. Is- isn't cheese kind of rotten? Isn't that what it, it is? It smells it's... like dirty old man balls yeah. and socks. I'm not, no. I'd rather deal with a little hint of cedar and urine. Yeah, I guess I'd go with the hamster thing too. Fun fact about hamsters is, um, it's funny, This guy, I saw this they meme. They die really quick? Yeah, they do. This meme, this guy created a meme where he said, where the fuck do hamsters live outside of pet stores? Well, no shit! They live in, they come from... Well, Afghanistan is one country where they live in the wild, and I found really? out. Yeah, and if you're thinking about getting a hamster, don't do the thing a lot of people with dogs or cats, where they're like, "Well, I'll get two of them, and that way, if they if I leave them alone, they can they kill each other." Yeah, hamsters hate living with other hamsters. You can breed them, but you have to take one of them out as soon as they breed, because otherwise they'll get into a fight and they will fight to the death like tigers do. Uh, that happened. Yeah. That happened to me. Oh, really? So you watched them? Uh... Well, it, it was okay. I, I'm not going to get into the whole last story, but me and my ex, ex, ex had dwarf hamsters. Yeah. <laughs> they were tut and teety. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And we didn't know that they would mate and have a bunch of babies. So we looked in the cage one day, there was a bunch of tiny little jelly beans. So we had like a bunch of tiny mini hamsters. And then like we got, we took them to the pet store and then they bred again and then Tut killed TD. And then we had another one 
which killed another one. It was a horrible, horrible situation. So I just wouldn't recommend doing that. We learned a hard way, but the little tiny hamsters that were like this big were really cute for a minute. Yeah, so I mean. Yeah, but it was like murder. It was flat out hamster murder. Oh yeah, they they, uh, they do not like to share their living space. No, it was really bad. It was really, really, uh, yeah, traumatizing. Okay, what was your next one? Would you rather spend a year in a psychiatric hospital for the criminally insane or a year in a um, hard max prison? I'd choose a psychiatric hospital. Um, there's a documentary I really like called Out of, Out of Sight, Out of Mind, um, the Brockville Psych. It's a place located, um, well, several miles from here in a town called Brockville. Um, it's a really good documentary about a psych ward where everyone who lives there has been violent on the outside, but there have been murders and violence in the ward. And mm. um, it, most the patients are good most of the time, but um, I think you can live there without being attacked too much. So I would stay there, you know. Yeah. Well, I think we, we've had a previous um, question that kind of, was somewhat similar. And I think the psychiat for me, the mental factor of being in the psychiatric hospital would fuck me up more than mm -hmm. being in, than the prison. I think the prison I'd either sink or swim. And I know I'd probably die guys, but give me, I'm my little lioness fierceness inside me thinks that maybe there's some way that I could try to find a way to survive that and grow from it. So you, the the mental hospital would probably take me down. Really? Hmm, yeah. I, one of my biggest fears, ooh, I don't know if I should say this on camera, um, is losing my mind and not knowing that it's happened. Well, you wouldn't, yeah, you might not realize it in a cycle. But that's terrifying. Cycle. Yeah, because everyone around you is crazier than you. And, That's terrifying. Uh, yeah, so that I don't. It's just it's a terrifying thought for me. To yeah, not you might know. might get to a point where you think like uh, like maybe there's some kind of weird behavior. Normally, you wouldn't do it because you wouldn't want anyone to think you're crazy. But right. you're surrounded by people who are doing much crazier things than you. So you and I overthink everything. So I would overthink all the crazy people around me, and it would probably drive me eventually crazy. Yeah, it's to the be power. Honest. It's the power of groupthink. If you're surrounded yep. by people behaving in a certain way, exactly. It's, easier. it's it's yeah. It's like the psychology behind riots. How yep. people once a certain amount of people start, you know, burning things or breaking things, eventually everyone else thinks, well, you know, martial law. Now we can do it. Well, I mean, stop all of in us. that kind of a situation, I I would choose being a good person, but if forced to be around psychotic people for a year yeah. i don't think it would do well for me well most of the time they're it not wouldn't do well for me being in prison either but i think it would make me harder and therefore <sighs> yeah well most 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 of the time they're not violent they're just they just crazy they're, out, they're just out of touch with reality they're not that seeking. scares me that terrifies me most of the people who are actually violent they have either borderline personality disorder or they're bipolar so when they're angry they can't control it but uh, if someone else does that and you just walk away and unlike it's not the, but it's not the violence that scares me. Yeah, I know what you mean. But it's like in a prison, there are lots of blind spots. So people yeah. can be killed, whereas in a psych ward, there's so many cameras and they, they have people watching at all times. So if, yeah. if, if violence erupts, they can attend to it immediately. Whereas I wonder. OK, you know what? Good question. You bring. OK, so how can they have cameras in mental facilities because of HIPAA. They HIPAA. can't have the Health Privacy Act. So well, maybe the, maybe we don't have that here. OK, so yeah, in, the, in hospitals, like my father was just in a hospital not like a couple weeks ago and his wallet went missing. And so yeah. I went in there and I work I work in medical I have my whole life. And I'm like, I'm like, aren't there cameras? And they're like HIPAA. I go, oh shit, I'm so stupid. Of course there's not cameras in here. You can't have cameras in a hospital because of HIPAA. It's the Health Privacy Act. You cannot, it's personal health information. So you cannot be filmed. Nothing can be told. So I'm like, 
I don't think there's cameras in mental health institutions. I guarantee you it's a HIPAA violation. Well, I mean, um, it certainly wouldn't be legal to have cameras in a, in a washroom. But, um, but yeah, I mean, in this documentary I was telling you about, they, them, they have them set up in every hallway so they can watch what the patients are up to. Because mm -hmm. um, there was a patient in this documentary who, she, it's funny because they said the females are the most violent too. And this one patient, she. I love how you always try to go say this. <laughs> I'm well, calling that, bullshit. Well, there's a girl in the documentary and she admitted it. She she punched holes in the fucking walls. They Women are not more violent than men so she, they in said those men, situations. They said men are, were more violent on the outside. Because there was a okay. guy, there was a guy who was schizophrenic. He murdered his mother, but the women they say are violent on the inside. And this woman, she punched holes in the walls. They've had to, like, pile on top of her and inject her with like sedatives, and she's just, and she admitted it. You know, she's just, she's okay. a wild animal. You know. I'm gonna do some research on this, and I'll come back to you with a dissertation on well, who. What gender is more violent in captivity? Well, I'll send you a link for that documentary. You can watch it. I will watch the documentary and then I will do my own studies. Thank you. Okay. All right. <laughs> I'm such or, a pain in the ass. Or like I told you, if uh, women are 40 times more likely to be sexually assaulted in a women's prison than on you the. You said side. that. Yep. I know, but ooh, I, I mean that could be true. But well, you've never known about the violence. You've, you've never known an evil woman in your life. You've never known a violent no woman. Evil. Um, of course. Yeah. Very close to me. You ever not you ever heard a woman say she hangs out hangs out with guys because there's less drama? Uh yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Not so, me though, because I have some good girlfriends right now. Oh, so. I see. Okay. So what was your what you got? What was it, you, mine was a psychiatric hospital in the year or oh, the year. Okay, yeah, okay. So mine is would you rather accidentally send a naughty picture to your dad or your boss? Boss. To the boss? Really? Yeah. My mm. boss knows she, she's equally as awesome as me, and she would laugh at it and be like, Rachel, what the fuck are you doing? Oh, okay. And not, make it a joke. Not everyone has a boss like that. Oh, no. My, my boss is amazing. I literally oh. have the best boss I've ever had in my entire life. I'm very thankful. Well, yeah, I mean, she wasn't she, listen to this, but if she did, I love you, boss. Well, I definitely wouldn't want a naughty picture sent to my dad. Not that I have any contact with him as far as, well, I am my own boss, but I guess when I did have a boss, I certainly okay, wouldn't, yeah. wouldn't have wanted him to see it. So with my dad, I would just say, sorry, you know, didn't mean to send that to you, but him, I don't know, that would have been weird, you know? Cause yeah. A guy with another guy. That'd be weird, yeah. yeah. See, yeah. I have such a great relationship with my, like, we're, we're friends. Like, I respect this woman a lot. She, she's done a lot for me. I do, I, I respect her. We joke around. We're very, very similar. And she would lit, she would make fun of me for the rest of my life and laugh at it. And we would, it would be great. Actually, it'd be quite funny. So. Okay. I'll definitely go with that. All right, what's yours next one? Um, I have one more for some reason because I have number eight and I don't have it filled in, so I don't know if I deleted it or I didn't have one. I can find another one off the cuff, but um, would you rather be forced? Okay, so you're forced to do this to a person. You have to either give someone a lobotomy while they're awake or cut off their leg at the knee while they're awake well i guess uh, it would be easier to do the leg whereas with the brain you're cutting it you have to cut out a very specific part i mean unless that's not the deal if you're just supposed to cut out a random part of the brain no you have to give like do the specific yeah because i like don't, okay yeah, but I what if you had okay i'll give you you have a medical book with instruction but you don't that's it you can just read it as you go well i mean i guess ultimately i'm going to be forgiven for the leg uh they can find ways to get around after that whereas with the brain i mean you're pretty much i don't know if you're exactly brain dead after a lobotomy but you're not very functional you're almost a vegetable yeah um like i like i there's a story about how the what the kennedys i think it was kathleen kennedy 
she um, she started like messing around with boys when she was a teenager, and they decided, oh, well, here's a way to deal with that. We'll lobotomize her. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not good. <laughs> Oh, you're fucking up. You're being you're being annoying and and, and talking too much. We're gonna give you a lobotomy. Yeah, right. Yep. You need a lobotomy. You need a lobotomy. You need a lobotomy. Should yeah, I'm gonna go with a leg too. Yeah. All right. My last one is uh, would you ra- would you rather yeah, share a bed? Would you rather share a bed with a walrus or an eel? A walrus. Well. Well, the thing with about the eel is, I guess. We have to present. Is it an electric eel? Well, um, you know what? Or a regular just, eel. I was just thinking, like, this is a fish, right? It can't live out of water, can it? Do you know? I don't no, think. It, it, it can't. It needs water. But there are electric eels, and so if they touch you, then you're being electrocuted. And then there are regular eels, and they're just kind of slimy. And they're, they're, it's a snake. It's a water snake, essentially. Well, I guess. Kind of. That- I guess this is a bed with fucking water in it. But uh, walruses are huge, and if they roll over on you, yeah, you're gonna die. But you know, mo- most animals. But they might be cuddly. Well, yeah, most animals, you know, they they'll sleep when their owner sleeps. Except, well, cats will sometimes get up, but usually, like most animals, will sleep when their owner sleeps. So probably the walrus would sleep, whereas who yeah. knows what the fucking eel is up would be up to. Yeah, I don't trust an eel. Yeah. You from, from like from the Little Mermaid, you know how the little eels, Slepson and Jepson or whatever the hell their names were, Ursula's little fucking eels. Yeah. That I just that's what I think of. I'm like, oh, you're slimy little snakes, and I don't trust you. I'm gonna go with a walrus. Although the walrus in Alice in Wonderland ate the little oysters. That is true. Yeah. One of the most fucked up movies I've ever seen was um, it's called Tusk. Have you heard of that movie? No. It was, it's the weirdest thing where this guy puts an ad in a paper saying that if someone moves into his house and lives as a walrus, he'll like pay all his expenses and everything. The fuck? But somehow he distorted his body and he made him into a walrus. See, guy- this is how shit, this is how you have better information than me. You watch and listen to shit like this. So well, I can't imagine movie. what's coming across your feed. Well, it's a fiction movie. It was a Kevin Smith film and, well, and, I uh, well, the last it ends with him being a walrus, and you'd have to see it to know what I mean. It is the most. Is it creepy or like? It's the most simultaneously hilarious and tragic <laughs> thing I've ever seen. It's like it's hilarious <laughs> that he ended up that way, but it's also sad. But I have to say that was like a really brutal. <laughs> so and, not like the fly. No, no, the fly is just tragic. Uh, but tragic. this. Tragic. Is- this is like depending on how you look at it, it's either funny or tragic. But okay. Overall, like some at some aspects of the film are kind of weak, but um, yeah, the ending it's just uh, I have to hand it to Kevin Smith how how he could make it funny and tragic at the same time. That's that's a rare ability. I'll do t- the task if you do Swiss Army Man. Swiss Army. Do you know if that's on Netflix? Um, I'm not just. I'll I'll find it for you. You have to. It's the one I told you with Elijah Wood, where his farts got him across the ocean. Yeah. It's it's a very sentimental, ridiculous, good movie, and everyone who's watched it will agree. I know it sounds really weird, but it's actually a great movie. I'm gonna send it to you so you can mm. watch it because I think it'd be right up your alley. Yeah, I tend to like weird because you're like like that weird. It, it's it's emotional but weird but like there's a good story and I don't know it was cool. Like yeah, I've it. seen a lot of weird movies in my time, like Being As John Malkovich. I. That's a great one. As have I. Did you see Being John Malkovich? Of course. Yeah, so I like that kind of weird. So. I mean, I have this hanging on my wall in my bedroom. So. It's a funny thing about horror movies because. I can watch them like just sober and I'm fine, but if I watch them while stoned, I'm actually horrified. Oh God, no, not me. I'm the exact opposite. The opposite. Oh I was... yeah, I'll get. I I love it. Like I'll get the first. Speaking of which, the Fear Street. I think I talked about that on our la... the Fear Street movies on Netflix. Yeah. The different. I told you to watch them. They're the different uh, generations. Epic. Got stoned. Watch them. Badass. 
But I tried watching Nightmare on Elm Street Part 3 while I was stoned. I was like, oh my god, this is horrible. Oh, no, (laughs) you you need me there to laugh. Yeah. Because I'd be laughing and at the campiness. There is is good humor in that movie, too, where he's interviewing Zsa Zsa Gabor. And he's like, one more question. Who gives a fuck what you think? And it's Uh person. I love it. Also, I can then teach you how to, because I, what I do is overanalyze the, the makeup effects. I'm like, that blood is so fucking fake. They could have done better. They have a budget. I can make better fake blood than that. Or like the wounds, because if I know I can make better wounds, that pisses me off. Like you have a fucking budget for makeup. Do well, better. That's, that's like one of the biggest parts of a horror movie budget. You got to have all that. Well, if you guys want to know a recipe for the best blood, Morgan asked me yeah. the other day, and I, I did not give it to him. I didn't, but there is there is a secret recipe. You're going to hold back now, too? Um, I'm going to save it for the next episode. Oh. Well, they say... Okay, let's, well, let's do a blood... We'll do a blood theme, and then I'll, I'll tell you. Oh. I'll Actually, you know what? I'll make some, and I'll demonstrate it on camera. Well, there, they, How's that? Yeah, or that, or use cherry corn syrup. That's supposed to. I think that's. Uh, a, no, 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 no. This is way better. This is better. Way better. I'll prove it to you on the next. Would you rather? If you guys want to join us next week, I'm actually. I'll do. I'm gonna do a little. I'll do a little zombification. I'll do a little latex, a little wound, and then I'll do my fake blood, and I will show you my fake blood on Would You Rather. Yeah, and one thing I'm gonna look into is if. Um, we can do we can do it live on the Facebook group. The Human That'd Monster. be great. That'd be really fun to get live yeah. feedback. I think, yeah. I think I can invite other people. So yeah. um yeah, I think you can do it on Insta too. Um, but I don't know that doing it on the live Facebook would be great. I'll figure it out. I used to do social media for I'm, Christ's sake for zombie. I'm, I'm getting really fucking sick of Instagram actually. The goddamn. <laughs> I know it's pissing me off. Like I, like I was saying about the catfishes and. Fucking, it's just it's the marketing where they're trying to sell it's you shit. It's such bullshit. See, I don't know if women constantly get contacted by guys on there, but yes, but, but women I delete them all. But yeah, women are constantly, you know, the hello dear messages and you know where that's going. So that that yeah. that's a big part of Nigeria's economy now. There These guys go. defrauding people and people who are really depressed and looking for love. Yep. yep. Yeah. Assholes. Well, I'm going to do that next week. So my very secret blood um, <laughs> recipe, and I'm going to do a little zombie makeup for you. Oh, nice. Not, I, I'll, I'll come with it on, on camera. Someday I want to do, for Halloween, I want to dress as an incompetent surgeon. So, like, wear <laughs> surgical scrubs with, like, blood all over me. Dude, yeah. I'm listening to Dr. Death right now. Yeah, on, I listen to that. That's a good oh, one. I, I've never listened to it. And actually, the, the, the show is out now on Peacock or some bullshit like that. The oh, movie. Made, so they made a oh, They, adapted they made it. a series. It's a series. And uh, Alec Baldwin's in it. Um, really? Yep. And the guy from Grey's Anatomy. Yeah, that guy was, that doctor was fucked up. He's psychotic. Oh, real narcissist like, well i remember one this guy went in for like a basic back surgery and the doctor yeah. deliberately disabled him he just yep. destroyed it, it was his best friend now. it was his best friend yeah yeah it was his best friend he left a he, surgical they, they, sponge in someone and i don't they know they went to uh a... high school together and played football together and that guy yeah. was like the only guy that was his friend and he made him a quadriplegic yeah it's it's crazy really, i'd recommend it to, to anyone that's a they, well, I mean, that the people who produced it, that was actually originally produced for FM radio, which mm-hmm. is why it sounds so slick and everything. They had a big budget, but yeah, yeah it's very well done. Yeah. Yep. I wonder if we've bored everyone yet or if they like us talking. Yeah. I like us talking. Well, I think that's big, that's a mainstay of this segment. Listen, me uh, and uh, I don't have, I've never named him. Probably Lucifer is a good name. Me and Lucifer here. Al. Hey, Al. Al's good. What up, dude? There's a, there's a Canadian children's show. I mean, it was, you know, it ended many decades ago, but it was called Mr. Dress Up, and there was a character called Alligator Al. And yet we don't Alligator Al. Here he is. He's Alligator Al. 
Oh, you know what? Speaking of which, um, I'm going to go ahead and give a RIP to Biz Marquee. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of kids shows, because not only did we know Biz back in the day, because we were old and we remember him, um, he was on Yo Gabba Gabba, which was my kid's favorite um, kids show back when they were toddlers. As a guest, and host. It, yes, he, the, he did Biz's beat of the day. So oh, he'd come on and he would beatbox and my kids would try to beatbox after him. And so they even knew who Bismarck he was. And it was really sad the other day when uh, we learned that. So RIP sucks. He, uh, I mean, he, he was a very, a very kid friendly kind of guy. I mean, aside from, <laughs> aside from the song you wrote about taking a shit. But <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> but hey. And again, boys are fascinated by that too. So Of course they are. <laughs> Trust me, I've had more bugs placed in my face this past week than you could possibly ever imagine. What kind of bugs? I had a I, name it. I've had worms. We had a worm farm. We had a, a bowl full of worms. I have lizard eggs. I have centipedes. I have frogs. I everything just big runs centipedes. in my house. There's just look at this big. Yeah. yeah. They're supposed to be good for getting rid of cockroaches, apparently. Well, I have a pest control guy for that, so I don't have any of those. Thank God. Oh yeah, yeah. They, they uh, but it's, it's really hard with roaches because they they keep adapting to the poison. Yeah. So yeah, they're fucking. They're gonna outlive the nuclear ap- apocalypse. Yeah, they're constantly having to upgrade all the. I hate those fuckers. Stuff. Somebody yeah. kill them. Yeah, you can't get rid of them. They've been found all over the planet, even in. Kill the- them. Kill. Co- we need to cure cancer. And find something that kills cockroaches. Indefinitely. They're succeeding because they're adaptable, you know. Well, let's what... take what they have then and and use it in human beings to adapt. I need more sage yeah. now. Well, there's a uh, there's a cave in Mexico where like there are all these bats and the the, the ground is just guano. Just several, several feet of guano and there are cockroaches that live in it and that's what they eat and it's just like Oh, they're probably un- untouchable. Yeah, so uh, I'm, I like to think that maybe bad people are reincarnated in that cave. As yes. Like, oh my God. I hope you're a cockroach, and I hope you eat guano for the I entire life. I hope you life. live in a dark cave eating fucking bat feces. Sorry about my sage yeah, smoke. Like, it's, it's like some of these criminals. Like the bat is their victim reincarnated in yes the and then they're living in the shit yeah. that would be fantastic oh you know what we could do is just put the sage in owl's mouth like a little cigar there we go how's that yeah that looks yeah it looks like he's smoking a cigar yeah <laughs> i'm crafty are you able to buy cuban cigars in florida or is that taboo i think we are now yeah Wait, I don't even know. I don't smoke cigars, so I don't know. Mm. Who knows? Probably. I mean, you can get them somewhere. We're in Florida. Yeah, I suppose so. There's yeah. a lot of Cubans. Yeah. Well. Uh, all right. Well, on that note, that's all for now. Thank you for me, Morgan Rector, and... Me, Rachel Telfor. We need a good sign-off. Let's work on that. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Until everybody. next time. And we welcome your suggestions as well. So bring them. We love you. I love you, Morgan. You're the best. I look forward to these. All right. Take care. (laughs) I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye.